Well, hi there, boys and girls. Today we're going to learn how the fundamental theorem of calculus can be applied to figure out things about f of x. And so let's just get started. I've got a derivative here, 3x squared plus 4x minus 5, and I've got an initial condition. This is an ic. And I can rewrite this also as 2 comma negative 1. This 2 is your x and negative 1 is your y. And I'm supposed to find the y coordinate at 3. And so in order to do that, I'm going to need to find out what f of x is. And we're going to do this two different ways. The first way, we're going to actually find f of x, and then we're going to be able to find the, we're going to plug in 3. And then the second way, we're going to apply the fundamental theorem of calculus and maybe not necessarily even find f of x as a, with a plus c. You'll see what I mean. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to integrate dy dx, and if we do that, we get y equals x cubed plus 2x squared minus 5x plus some constant c. And this, at this point, we can plug in our x and our y. And so if we plug in 2 for x and a negative 1 for y, we'll get that negative 1 equals 2 cubed is 8, 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8, minus 10 plus c. And so if you solve this thing, that's 16 minus 10, that's 6. We subtract 6 from both sides. I get that c equals negative 7. And so I have my y equals equation, y equals x cubed plus 2x squared minus 5x minus 7. So we've taken our derivative and our initial condition and actually found the original graph. So what we can do at this point is we can plug in 3 for x and I'll get 3 cubed is 27, 3 squared is 9 times 2 is 18, minus 15 minus 7. And let's see, what is that? 18 minus 15, that's 3, 3, negative 4. So it looks like I'm going to get 23. So y of 3 is 23. And that's not too bad. Now let's take a look at a different method. And I'm not saying it's going to be better, but it is something you have to learn because sometimes we have to do this method. The fundamental theorem of calculus says that the integral from a to b of f prime is the change in the y coordinates, f of b minus f of a. We are interested in finding f of 3, and we happen to know f of 2. So since I know 2 and I'm looking for 3, I can write this relationship. The integral from 2 to 3 of f prime of x has to equal f of 3 minus f of 2. And this relationship is true, and I'm going to look and see what I'm looking for. I'm looking for f of 3, and I know f of 2. f of 2 was given to me as negative 1, so I can replace f of 2 with negative 1. And on top of that, I can solve this equation for what I'm looking for. I want to know what f of 3 is, so I'm going to add f of 2 to both sides, and I'll get this statement that f of 3 is equal to negative 1 plus the integral from 2 to 3 of f prime of x. So what I need to do now is I need to evaluate this integral from 2 to 3 of f prime of x. And so that's going to be the first thing we do is we find our antiderivative and our antiderivative, of course we did that in the first part, our antiderivative is x cubed plus 2x squared minus 5x evaluated between 2 and 3 and I'm going to do negative 1 plus this, this is going to give me my answer for f of 3. So let's see if we can do this math. The first thing we do is plug in our 3. 3 cubed is 27. 3 squared is 9 times 2 is 18 minus 15. So we've plugged in the 3. Now we plug in the 2. 2 cubed is 8. 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8 minus 10 and if I do all of this I'm going to get f of 3. Alright so let's simplify this. 27 I got well I'll do 18 minus 15 first that's 3. 27 plus 3 that's going to be 30. 8 plus 8 is 16 minus 10 is 6 so I'm going to get negative 1 plus 24 
which is 23, and that's f of 3. And some of you might be saying, wait a minute, Mr. G, that was a lot more work. And I agree in this instance that it was a lot more work, but we're going to see in this next example that our hand, the, the gauntlet has been thrown down, and our hand is forced to use this method. All right, so sometimes there is no antiderivative, so we must use method two in our graphing calculator. So I've got f prime of x is sine of x squared. And so have any of you ever taken the derivative of something and gotten as the answer sine of x squared? Um, you might think, well, maybe negative cosine of x squared. If I take the derivative of negative cosine of x squared, I do get sine of x squared, but then unfortunately, I must invoke the chain rule and do times 2x. I've taken the derivative of something and gotten sine of x squared times 2x, but have you ever taken the derivative of something and just gotten sine of x squared and that's it? I don't know, let's go ask the calculator. Calculator, I've got this set up here. What is the integral of sine of x squared? And I hit enter, and the calculator says the integral of sine of x squared is just the integral of sine of x squared. It doesn't know what to do with this because it does not have what's called an elementary antiderivative. And that's sort of neat. No one, in, in my opinion anyway, no one in the history of the world has ever taken the derivative of an elementary function and gotten sine of x squared as the answer. Uh, that function just doesn't, so we just call it the integral of sine of x squared. But that does not mean that we cannot solve the problem. So watch, watch this magic. I can say that the integral, I'm looking for f of 2 and I know f of 1, so the integral from 1 to 2 of sine of x squared dx must equal, according to the fundamental theorem of calculus, f of 2 minus f of 1. That's what FTC says. So if I can somehow get the area under the curve of sine of x squared from 1 to 2 using rectangles, left, right, midpoint, or the limit is, goes to infinity, the cal which the calculator can do that, then I can solve this. And I'm looking for f of 2, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add f of 1 to both sides, and f of 1 is negative 5, and so I can solve this algebraically. f of 2 is going to equal f of 1, which is negative 5, plus the integral from 1 to 2 of sine of x squared. Sometimes we just need our calculator. So I'm going to come back to the front of this integral, and I'm going to put negative 5 in front of it, and a plus. And I'm going to go down here at the very end, and after my comma x, and since it can't find an antiderivative for the plus c, I'm going to tell it to find the area under the curve between 1, comma 1, and 2, comma 2. And the calculator can do that. And so I'm going to hit enter, and it's busy. And I've got the answer, negative 4.50549. That's pretty neat. All right, what if you had been given f of 2 and you were asked to find f of 1? You need to pay attention to which one of these things is your initial condition. It's very important that you have this equation right here down, the FTC down. So if you were, if you were given f of 2 and asked to find f of 1, then f of 1 would actually equal f of 2 minus the integral from 1 to 2 of sine of x squared. What I've done is I've just manipulated this true statement. I added f of 1 to both sides, and I subtracted the integral, and that's how you would do that. Okay, so let's practice this with some graphs. So I've got the graph of f prime. So I'm going to label this once, label this twice, three times. I am looking at f prime, so my brain knows what to do. And it consists of two line segments in the semicircle. Given that f of negative 2 is 5, that's my initial condition. That's important. So I've got this ordered pair, negative 2, comma 5. Find the following. f of 0. Well, I'm going to be using a relationship that the integral from negative 2 to x, where x is any of these numbers, 0, 2, or 6, the integral from negative 2 to x of f prime of x is going to give me f of x minus f of negative 2. And f of negative 2 is 5. So I'm going to have this relationship and I'll solve for these three. So if I want to find f of 0, I would say that the integral from negative 2 to 0 of f prime would give me f of 0 minus f of negative 2. 
And so to find f of 0, I'm going to add f of negative 2 to both sides. And I'll get that f of negative 2 is f of, f of 0, which is given to, oh, wait, I don't want to find f of negative 2. I apologize. I'm trying to find f of 0. Silly me. f of 0 is going to equal, there we go, f of 0 equals f of negative 2, which is 5, plus the integral from negative 2 to 0 of f prime. So you've got to get used to manipulating this equation around. You will do this on the AP exam a lot, so it's very important. So I'm going to come over here to the graph. The integral from negative 2 to 0 is the net signed area under the curve. So from negative 2 to 0, I've got a triangle. So I'm just going to find the area of this triangle. And it has a base of 2 and a height of 4. 2 times 4 is 8 divided by 2. This has an area of 4. So f of 0 is going to equal 9. 5 plus 4. Now what's f of 2? f of 2 is going to equal 5 plus the integral from negative 2 to 2 of f prime of x dx. Because of this relationship right here, I've, I've, changed, I've plugged in a 2 for x. And so that's going to be 5 plus the net signed area under the curve from negative 2 to 2. And again, I'll have a triangle this time. And, th and this time, the area is going to be 8. And 5 plus 8 is going to give me 13. What about f of 6? f of 6 is going to be my initial condition of 5 plus the area under the curve from negative 2 to 6 of f prime of x. Now here I've got to remember that if the graph drops below the x-axis, that's got to count as a negative net signed area. So I know so far we've got 4 and 4 which is 8, but underneath the curve here I've got a semicircle and that semicircle has a radius of 2. And so the area of a circle with a radius of 2 is 4 pi, and then half of that is 2 pi, but I've got to count that as a negative 2 pi. So this is going to be what I had before, 5 plus 8, which is 13, but I've, then I have to subtract off the 2 pi. All right, so let's take a look at one where they just tell me the area, and let's see if we can figure out our integral. The first one, we, we need to pay attention to what our initial condition is. Our initial condition is 3, but they asked me to go backwards and figure out where it was at 0. Never fear. If, as long as you have this fundamental theorem of calculus, you can do this. The integral from 0 to 3, and notice how I went from lower to upper. The integral from 0 to 3 of f prime of x is going to equal f of 3 minus f of 0. Just make sure you write that down and then you can solve this for whatever you want. Here I want to solve this for f of 0. So I'm going to add f of 0 and bring it over here and then I'll subtract the integral. f of 0 is going to equal f of 3 which is 5 and then minus the integral from 0 to 3. It's minus because we're going backwards. We're at 3 and we want to figure out where we were before. Now it says that that area is 4, so this is just going to be 5 minus 4, which is going to be 1. So we were actually at the y value of 1 here. Now f of 7 is going to be going forward from 3 to 7. So f of 7 is just going to equal my initial condition of 5 plus the integral from 3 to 7 of f prime. You're going forward, so you can just your initial condition plus your integral. And now from 3 to 7, my area is 9, but it's underneath the x-axis. So I've got to count that as a negative area. So that's going to be 5 minus 9, which is negative 4. Now f of 9, I'm going to, this is going to be 5 plus the integral from where we started to 9 of f prime. And that's going to be... Um, my net signed area here will be starting at 3. I've got a negative 9, but then a positive 2. So that this is going to be a net signed area of negative 7. So this is going to be 5 minus 7, which is negative 2. All right, so let's see if we can maybe graph f with this information. Um, I'm going to go ahead and plot the points that I know. I know for a fact that at 0, we're at 1. I'll just call that 1. And then at 3 in the initial condition, we were up here at 5. Just call that 5. And then the other thing that we know is we know f of 7 and f of 9. f of 7 
was negative 4, so I'm going to put that underneath the x-axis, and f of 9 was negative 2. Now I want to make sure that this makes sense to us. We increased, then we decreased, and then we increased. Does that make sense with what we know about derivatives? My derivative is positive, I am increasing. That makes sense. My derivative is negative, I am decreasing. Makes sense. My derivative is positive, I'm increasing. It's just now we can figure out exactly how much we increased and decreased by connecting that to the area under the curve of f prime. The area under the curve of f prime tells you exactly how much to go up or down. And on top of that, I can take advantage of concavity. If f prime is increasing, f is concave up. But about 1.5, I stop being concave up and I start being concave down because f prime starts decreasing. And I stay concave down until it looks like about negative 5. And then I've got to turn it back over to concave up get here. This is harder to do with this little pen than you think. And then I'm concave up until about 8 and I've got to go back to concave down. So it looks something like that. That's messy but you get the idea I hope. Alright so let's do one last question and here I've got to read the words and understand whether I'm going to be subtracting or adding. We've got an initial condition of 95 degrees. That's my starting temperature. And it says that the pizza's temperature is decreasing at a rate of 6e to the negative 0.1t. That would be interesting to figure out. Estimate the pizza's temperature when t equals 5. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my initial condition, 95 degrees, and I'm going to subtract off how much we decrease. And the way I find that is I integrate this rate from 0 to 5 of r of t dt. And I'm going to do that on my calculator. So my initial condition and it says it's decreasing, so I'm going to subtract off the integral. And I've got 6, and then e is diamond x to the negative 0.1. And it says t, but I'm going to use x's. With respect to x, and then I've got to go from 0 to 5. And this answer is 91 point, oh, my 6. I don't see my 6. Hold on. Sometimes my calculator on my computer doesn't. There. There's my 6. 71.3918 is the correct answer to that. 71.3918. So please pay attention to this. Focus on this when you're practicing this tomorrow. This is a really, really huge, important concept for you to master. So I'll see you guys tomorrow.